Say amen. amen. It's a very simple word today. It says time to grow up. We are in the time that spiritual maturity is needed to survive. Head games are being ran on lost and vulnerable weak people who are looking for God. But the only thing they seem to see is a man. When you come into the house of God, I'm an instrument. I have no salvation to give you. I myself must go before God to receive my own. And in receiving my own, I cannot share what I receive with you. It is designed specifically for me, which means, hear me clearly, don't think you can't get what I, mm -mm, you can do better than me. You also have a designed salvation. How can you say that, Bishop? Real easy. When the scripture says work out your own salvation, that's a design for you. So when you walk according to your flesh, for whatever period of time you do, you take your own life into your own hands. This ain't in the notes, but we bless God for it. We have to take the opportunity when it is afforded to us to give our hearts and our minds and our lives to Christ. So then it's no time like the present to grow up. It's time out for continuing to be children in the world, tossed to and fro by what the world says. You must take a stand as an adult and walk uprightly before God because you choose to, not because I told you to. For what I say doesn't matter, except what I say in the spirit of God, from God. That's it. When we talking commonly one on one, my word is with the grain of salt. But when it's the word of the Lord, it has a mission. It has a course that it travels. God said I would that none would perish, but that all would have everlasting life. That means the course of God's conversation is to lead us to everlasting life. Not continuing in spiritual babyism. What you mean, bitch? It's real simple. There's enough of us out there who are still drinking milk. What's that soupy rice stuff? Mexican food? Mm -hmm. Tole. Tole? Yeah. yeah, there's enough people drinking and slipping on that. Time to grow up and boil that water out that rice so you got to chew it. It ought not be so soft that you can just slurp it down. Some folk ain't going to understand. Why are you talking about tole? Because it's a Mexican dish. And my heart belongs to my people. A lot of folk will understand that. For black folks, you, you can look at potato soup if you want to. White folk, it might be clam chowder. I don't know. Whatever soup that takes your, you know, it could be chicken noodle. I don't know. But it's time out to continually eat soft food that agrees with you. At some point you become big enough to consume whole food that has a certain amount of substance to it that you have to chew and digest. When the Bible says... Let's go to the word, John 14, 6. When the Bible says that Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but, my, but by me. When he says that, he says, I, mm, you can't get to God except by him. There's no way to get around him. There's no way to get under him. There's no way to go through him by force. The only way you go through Christ is that you accept him in your heart. That's it. You can't bully Jesus. Now, some people can bully the preacher into preaching what they want to hear. 
Preach on the topic of folk losing their life. Preach on the topic of school shootings. Preach on the topic. I don't need to preach on that. You seen it. And you got your own opinion. I don't need to preach on that. What God needs to tell us is how to get to him. We so busy living this life we live in each and every day, trying to get all we can out of one day. And some of us are missing it. But then we don't understand when it's time to leave here. Everybody got to die. If you've never attended a funeral. I've been to quite a few. Most of the preachers. Will say in a part of their message. We all and he points to the casket. We all got to go this way. No doubt. But how many people are concerned with what happens after that. We spend so much time trying to grab everything we can, like children. I won't, I won't. Most kids are excited the day before Christmas. They wake up with anticipation of getting everything that they wished for. It's, it's, it's a parent's dream to see the light in their faces and, and know that they did that. It's beautiful. What happens when that child becomes an adult? They die and they go to hell. Is that something you want to see? We spend so much time giving them everything in the world, but nothing in heaven. Time to grow up. Time to grow up. You can't continually live on tole. Some people might think you can. And if that's all you got, God bless you. In Africa, they have tole, believe it or not. They have rice cooked and it's really soupy and it's what they have. Okay. And for a baby whose stomach is bulging because they're hungry, and they're, yeah, it's going to do some good, absolutely. But at some point, that baby going to want to go kill a gazelle. <laughs> I want some meat, Daddy. <laughs> I want some barbecue. <laughs> hmm. He said, <clears throat> he's the way, the truth. And the life. And no man cometh unto the Father except by him. Now, we live so much in the world of fakeness. That people are selling tickets <laughs> to concerts filled with lies. Spiritually. Please let me put that in order. Spiritual tickets to people to come and see this person. This person. You pay a thousand dollars just to sit in the audience to see this person as if that person has a direct line to God and can put in a word for you. Time to grow up. If Jesus said no man comes in the to the father except by him. Why are you going through somebody else? I never did understand that when people pray and they call out people's names. I'm, I might get in trouble for this, but everybody know me. I ain't scared. Listen, hail Mary, full of grace. She did. She can't do nothing for you. Joseph can't do nothing for you. How dare you? That's sacrilege. What? You trying to tell me Mary is elevated with God? Are you serious? Joseph is elevated with God? Moses wasn't even elevated with God. And he was one of the ones seen standing beside him. <laughs> and then he had to be removed. They showed a picture. It's in there. Read it. And you saw Moses, Abraham, standing with Jesus. And so there was no confusion. God removed the other two. Uh-uh. Moses and Abraham don't matter. My son do though. Jesus. That's the only one. By his name we must be saved. By his sacrifice we must be saved. That's the truth of the matter. Not by John Wayne. Not by Bishop Jakes. Not by Joel Osteen. Not by all the mother folk. 
by Jesus. That's it. That's the truth of it. So any other name you calling out? If they ain't came to you, what you calling them for? Jesus makes an appearance. So what you're saying, Bishop, you saw Jesus? I see his reflection in me when I'm living like I'm supposed to be living. Because <laughs> only he can take me and turn me into something greater. Because I'm telling you now, I ain't nothing to be proud of. I have a past. But my present and future look a whole lot brighter because of Jesus. So I've grown up. Time for us to grow up. We've been babies long enough. We've decided not to walk with God long enough. Time to make the decision to do what is right before the Lord. We all want God to bless us, but we don't want to do what he wants from us. Time to grow up. Get out of that childhood mindset. It's my way of the how. We are tossed to and fro by different ministries boasting to be the only right ministry. But if Christ is the way to God, why do we allow so many deceiving middlemen to derail our salvation? If we know Christ is the only way to God, why do we allow so many? Only you can answer that because you would be the one that would be surfing on YouTube, listening to all these different ideas. And these are ideas, by the way. They can take the word and twist it to fit their idea of what they believe God. See, I'm not the preacher who's going to come to you and tell you how to live. I'm not going to do that. Unless God tell me to give you some instruction, and God has in times past instructed me to give instruction. Except it come from God. I'm not finna tell you, well, you need to wear dresses. Woman of God, you, you can't serve God in pants. Have you heard me say that? Have, have you? I won't even tell her that. You got to cut your hair. It's shameful for a man. Have you heard me say that? Have you heard me say that? Have you heard? Okay. We focus so much on the exterior. The childlike stuff that we miss the maturity of the spirit. God said it's time to grow up. Get off of the childlike stuff. I am so, God says, I'm so less concerned with the flesh than you. Most preachers pick on the flesh. Because that's the weakest point of man. And that's the way he feels his authority being projected over you. Well, I don't need to project that authority over you. I am a firm believer when the Bible says work out your own salvation. I'm a firm believer in that. Why? Because your salvation ain't going to look like mine. What does that mean? I thought the salvation is the same thing. It is. Everybody must go through Christ. But your walk is not going to look like my walk. When I'm allowed to eat pork. Something may be wrong in your body and God tells you you can't. Well, the Bible said, wait a minute. The Bible says you should rightly divide it. So all of us acting like babies going in there reading a certain passage of scripture and standing on it, making it sound like everybody else is wrong. You need to stop that foolishness. Because God spoke beyond your understanding. Nobody is ever able to capsulate one concept from God and make it be the complete concept of God. When I say encapsulate, you know what that means. You take that one concept out of the word and you say, God says, man shouldn't wear anything pertaining to a woman. And so now you preach your whole successful career on woman shouldn't wear anything pertaining to a man. And the whole time God was saying, there should not be any confusion when you see a man and when you see a woman. There should not be any cross-dressing when you see a man and you see a woman. There should not be any temptation of mindset where you interject yourself into... No, they just took it and... They take a concept and encapsulate it and make you believe 
that they got the only truth. When God looked beyond that moment and saw things further on up the road that dealt with the spiritual maturity of a person. What do you mean, God? Well, there were immature things going on in the world, but there were also spiritual things going on that people never addressed. Jesus did it when he came on the scene. He said, you have heard it said that if a man sleeps with another woman, he commits to I tell you, if a man looketh on a woman, he dealt with the heart, he dealt with the con he dealt with so many other issues. In other words, you could not encapsulate that one word and run with it. But we are still allowing it to go on, deceiving us, making us look to different aspects of life differently, being only confused. And he tells you, do not argue the word. It only brings about confusion. It only brings about strife. Don't stop that. If a person, need, he said, now, now I'm, I want to make sure everybody get this. The Bible says that any man lacketh wisdom. In other words, if any man lacketh understanding of the word of God, let him ask of him who liberally gives and upbraideth not. What do you mean? I can help you, true enough, but your true concept and the broadening of your mind will come from God. You've got to take it to God. You've got to break the habit of not seeking God's face. You've got to seek God for the truth. And then we have to be <laughs> examples of that truth. The world is looking to see what we're going to do. We are the people of God. The world is looking to us like, okay, so if you're saying you serve God, let's see how your God treats you. Nobody thinks about that. When you grumble and you complain, folks are listening. Let's read Ephesians 4, 14, 15. Hey. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 14, 15. Isn't that what I said? Okay. That we henceforth be no more children. Stop being a child. Tossed to and fro. Getting kicked around. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. You can be so inquisitive that you fall for the okie doke every time. You don't research the word of God to find out history. You research the word of God to find out application of life. Somebody ought to catch that. Listen. And carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. In other words, they're sitting there ready to deceive you. You walk into a church. He's not looking at a lost soul. He's looking at a dollar. He's not looking at you making it into heaven. He's looking at how he can improve his lifestyle. Get it. Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love. May grow up. Into. That should be capital. Because that's talking about growing up into God. Him. In all things. Which is the head. Even Christ. God, I love the way you put stuff. He done already told you, stop getting thrown, thrown around like a little kid. Falling for every doctrine that everybody come across. You know, sometimes they come across stuff. And they speak a concept or an idea that makes you go, wow. And now they hooked you. It's just a hook. If you want to get hooked in the word, get hooked in the word. Not the man. This man right here, this one, just this one. I'm just talking about me. That's all I know is me. I don't need to take credit for what God does through me. Yes, that was very country, but I still did it. Do's through me, yes. I know some people caught that out. Did he just say, did he, and he called himself a bishop? Yes, I do. But God called me a bishop. I did. God gives a prophetic word. I can't. 
God tells me what people are doing in secret and reveal to me and it be on point if they be honest. What you mean, Bishop? Sometimes folk want to lie. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. all, the and time. all the time. And I tell folk all the time, I'll believe God before I believe you. Mm -hmm. What you mean, sir? Mm -hmm. You heard me. God tell me something about you, I'll believe him before I believe you. Whether or not you remember, I don't care. This is what he telling me. So what it would do for you is to behoove you to listen, get an understanding, and correct your ways. But still, they're not looking for truth. They're looking for the show. The sheer numbers. Let me see, two, four, six, seven people in here. Yes, I just said it, seven people in here. Yes. Well, Bishop, how? You, you can't even pull more than seven people? It ain't about quantity. What is it about? Quality. My man. Quality of the word of God. So if you're looking for quantity, this ain't the place you want to be. You want to go look at your bigger churches that have, you know, the brand new edifices that, that cater to people walking through the door wanting to give you cups of coffee and mugs. And you ain't going to find that here. The only thing you're going to find here is I got a Bible for you. I give you a Bible. All day, every day. You call me. Because you need something. I'll answer. But I'm going to give you what thus said the Lord. This is maturity. Where I've had to grow into understanding. I can't be your rescuer. I can't be the savior. God has to be. And any time a man of God steps into the place where every time you call him, he comes a running and he delivers, then you're looking to him as the Savior, whereby you fall for the okie doke. Every wind of doctrine by slight of men and cunning craftiness. The cunning, the crafty. They know you stand in need of. And they know what they do for you ain't going to hurt them. Now, that's the part y'all don't see. When they do for you, it ain't going to hurt them. If it's going to hurt them, oh, baby, just wait on the Lord. He'll help. But when God gives a word, God delivers. Why? Because we've matured and we've grown up. By grace are we saved through Christ Jesus, not the instrument used to tell you that. Not through me. We're saved through the Lord Jesus. And if you don't know who Jesus is, everybody know who Jesus is? Yeah, okay. We we gonna stop right then. I'm gonna talk about Jesus. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 explains very easily how it is we are saved, rescued. How we obtain salvation. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. Stop walking around here with your chest out. Like you so good. Everything you do is good. Yes, I am Bishop John Wayne. God bless you. That sound official, don't it? That sound like, you know. <laughs> yes. What'd you say? Fake. That's, that's one of them babies that know me. <laughs> Bishop, that's not you. You sure right. It ain't. And I don't talk like that. But that's what people want to hear. They're looking for entertainment. They're looking for that voice that speaks in an authoritative manner. Bless you. God. Uh, no. Be real with God and he'll be real with you. He knows we sin and come short. He knows our hearts. And so for us to come into his house and present a false front, who are you fooling? Nobody but yourself. We should be examples of the truth of God. For by grace am I saved. 
I'm not saved because I'm such a good person. I'm not saved because I've done a lot of good in my life. I'm not saved because I'm the bishop. I'm saved because of grace through faith. And I believe God that he saved me. My salvation is not in accordance to my position. Because even in this position, I can get out of salvation. What you saying? But you heard me. Even in this position, you may not ever know it. I can still preach. But I'll be so far from God. How is that? I turn my back on him. I do what I want to do. Then when I get up here, oh, ha, ta, ta, ta. What? Stop faking and shaking. Live right before the Lord. Do what you're supposed to do. Walk uprightly before him. Let him take over control of your tongue when you speak. So that when his word goes out, it will accomplish that which what it was sent to. And not return unto God void. Not John Wayne. That's what this word is doing. It's touching the heart. Pricking the heart. Causing you to have a response to Jesus saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come to me. Take upon me. Learn of me. Mm. Our neighbors want to see a demonstration, an illustration of God. Listen, in our true habitat. Home, public, work. Not the fake one that they see recorded here where everybody is so quiet and solemn and ooh, ooh, ooh. not that one. No, see, people going people to judge your life according to what they see you live. Not according to what they see you doing off up in here. Because everybody in here doing right. Everybody. Some fighting sleep, some fighting whatever, some fighting ideas, flight of ideas in the head. Everybody in here doing right. We ain't looking when you're in here. Ain't nobody looking at you off up in here. But I promise you, when you go to work and clock in, all eyes on you. You say you're a Christian. Let's see. I want to see it. I want to see it demonstrated, illustrated. Go to Zechariah 8.16. It's real simple reading. These things, these are the things that you shall do. Now, when God <coughs> says... To do something. Uh oh. He means it. He's not saying it for health. He's not saying it for looks. He's saying it because it's important for a believer to act in this manner. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye, every man, the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. What that look like? Let me open up everybody's understanding. We don't have gates anymore. It, unless you live on the farm. And nobody in here live on the farm. Your daddy, different. But still, what are truth and peace? In your gates. Do I walk through your gates? Yes, I do. <laughs> your front door. Talk to me. Do I walk through your gate? Your room door. Do I walk through your gate? You see me back there, son? Yes, sir. Your room door. Your door. I ain't walked through your gate yet. <laughs> I can go sit in your car, but... Wherever you own the access to entry of, that's your gate. Hence, your car. You own that. So if I go in your car, listen, 
and I don't feel at peace. What's going on in your car? War. Y'all catch an understanding. If I walk in your room and I don't feel at peace, what's going on in your room? If I come in your house and I don't feel welcome, what's going on in your house? As a man of God, he tells me, don't worry about it, son. Knock the dust off your feet and leave. Folk don't get that. Because he told us we are to have peace and truth in our gates. If I walk in your house and there is a spirit of lies that hover over the whole house. Why is that? When he's telling you to execute judgment of truth. There's a reason why God said these environments need to be where my people are. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. Which tells me that if truth and peace are not in your home, not in your gate, not in your car, that tells me the enemy is. Which means when you take off, see, I, I love the way God make it personal. When you take off in your car, you take your own life in your own hands. And those that are with you. Because the spirit of the Lord ain't in there. You've got to usher in safety. You've got to usher in peace, truth. God, I invite you in. And if I stand in between your entry, I surrender. I rebuke my own self. <coughs> Cast out those things that would cause you not to feel free to roam in this place. I don't care if you're starting a business, if you're at home, if you're at work, if you are laying in the bed next to your husband or wife. I don't care if God ain't there. There's only two entities at work in this earth. God and who? Everybody say it. God and who? So if God ain't there, who are you playing with? <laughs> Fire. Mess around, gonna get burnt. And ain't nobody gonna be that off for no first aid. I ain't coming to your house to put no salve on you. You just gonna be a crispy little critter. Hmm. Now, it is to us that we are to minister truth always. No matter where you are, no matter who you're in front of. We are up against blinded minds. Under the influence of the world. Every single day. We were just speaking of a young lady we knew. Yeah. I, I, I can only go where God tell me to go. Listen. And we were talking about the fact that her son killed her. Do you not understand that her son's mind is blinded? By the world? For you to take the life of your own mother. It's personal for me. I'm going to tell you why. You ready? I ain't got my mama. Mine died when I was four or five. I don't remember when. You only get one. Just one. And when she gone, that's a void that can never be filled. And sad to say, that young man took his mama, took her life. That tells me he was blinded. He, let me read you the word, Zechariah 8, 16. These, oh no, that's not where I want to be. I want to be at 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 4. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced. That means. Everybody know what renounce means? To disconnect from, to, to speak against, to stand against, to renounce. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. 
Because dishonest people always hide. They never come out in the open. Not walking in craftiness. Nor handling the word of the Lord. The word of God deceitfully. Ain't none of this going on. I ain't trying to deceive you with the word. I'm not trying to influence your pocket to loosen up. That ain't this preacher. I'm going to tell you straight up. You don't do right by God. You suffer the consequences. Not me. God ain't going to get me because you ain't doing right. Especially if I'm telling you the truth. I'm good. I'm covered. Not handling the word of God deceitfully. But. By manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel, please understand, be hid. If you can't understand, if you can't understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. It is hid. To them that are lost. In whom the God of this world. Has blinded their minds. Has blinded the minds. Of them which believe not. The danger. Stop right there. The danger. In not instilling in your child. To know God. Everybody see where I went with that? The danger. Of not instilling in your child. A relationship with God. The danger. Of not having a prayer life. A relationship with God. Is that you now. Become subject. To having your mind blinded. Because you believe not. He also said. Lest the light. Of the glorious gospel of Christ. Who is the image of God. Should shine unto them. What does that mean? Except for the light. That comes to illuminate darkness. Except for that light. You remain blinded. You remain lost. You remain walking around in a bright atmosphere and you can't see you hitting walls you having things happen to you all because you decided you didn't want to serve the Lord you don't want to get hmm. so we must be in the truth and allow that truth to manifest the promises of God in our lives on a local level Ain't nobody in here global preachers. Not even me. All I can do is touch locally. So whomsoever will, that'll watch, God bless them. That'll hear, God bless you. I pray that God anoint your ear to hear the word of God. God bless you. But the manifestation of the word of God in the lives of our local people. See, everybody trying to go global. Everybody want to send missionaries over to Africa. Everybody want to see missionaries. I'm um, <laughs> And you got the hills of Kentucky and the hill of Carolina where people don't know God. Where they are being fed this misnomered gospel, this misinformed gospel, this deceitful gospel. Where they're picking up snakes and kissing them and getting stung. And the preacher who did it died because he got, he got bit too many times. Look, why are we doing that? The Bible didn't tell you to go pick up a certain serpent he said if no if it should happen i got you but you're making it happen that's why you keep getting bit don't know why you slip all swole up in the, your face well because the snake bit you in the face oh he's filled with the holy ghost he was able to handle the snake and not get bit the snake was full they fed it before we brought it out he didn't feel like biting Finally, the truth is God's love towards us. 
The truth is God loves those that love him. And to them that seek him early, we're going to find him. Proverbs 8, 17. I don't want you to skip over this because it's of such importance. God says, I love them that love me. There's a false gospel out there. Listen, that God loves everybody. Bishop, did you say that it's a false gospel? I sure did. How can you say that? That goes against everything I stand for. That, that don't even feel right. Then I need you to take this out of the word. Remove that. God says, I love them that love me. You don't love God? He ain't going to lose no sleep. Now, will he look for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. He'll look for the lost. He, he said, I would that none would perish. But in order to walk with God, we must love him. Then he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. But then he also says, and those that seek me early shall find me. Stop waiting till the last minute to seek me. Stop waiting till you're on your deathbed. Talking about I'll get saved when I get old enough. How you know you're going to make it that far? So many people are dying early. Early. My brother died when he turned 40. Early. I know some more folk who died prior to 30. Early. Now is the appointed time to give your heart to Christ. Now is the appointed time to let God have his way in your life. Now. Now listen, I'm, I'm going to read you something that ain't going to be up there. I want you to go to Psalms. I'm sorry, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs is right after Psalms. Proverbs chapter 8. And we're going to read verse 32 till I stop. From verse 32 till I stop. Psalms chapter 8. I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 8. Stop. Go back to Proverbs. I was like, why is he going back? How was that Proverbs? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32. Start. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children. For blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. And refuse it not. Verse 34. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Watching daily at my gates. Waiting at the post of my doors. All y'all want to be blessed. You know where you need to be. At the gates of God. Watching for him. Living your life according to his call on your life. Everybody is called. Everybody. Everybody. But the Bible also tells us many are called, but few are chosen. What does it mean to be chosen? Surrender and obedience. Surrender to God. For he called everybody. He said, I would that none would be lost, but that all would have everlasting. So he's called everybody. But it's up to you whether or not you accept the call. It's up to you whether or not you want to grow up. It's time to grow up. With all the stuff that's happening in the world, each day is unsure. Folks is popping off crazy left and right. Bishop, did you just say? Yes, I did. They popping off crazy left and right. Shooting up Walmart, shooting up stuff. I mean, come on, man. That is not the answer. But the Lord said earlier, and I said it to two people in here, daddy and son. The Lord said he has commissioned Satan to do strange things in this time because we have turned our backs on him. If that don't wake you up, I don't know what is. That was straight from the throne of God. He's commissioned. He's allowed the enemy. In other words, remember the conversation between Satan and God about Job? He had to go get permission, and God gave it to him. 
Everybody remember that? You remember the story? Think about it. He had to go to heaven to the throne of God and get permission. Now God has commissioned him, has let him go out into the earth and do strange things. And when God says strange things, please understand it's things that you haven't heard of before. For instance, what we spoke about earlier. That boy was the highlight of his mama's life. Anybody who talked to her knew she was crazy about her son and he took her life. That's strange. Soon as God said it, I was like, oh. Yes, strange things are happening. That's strange. She gave that boy anything he wanted. Worked multiple jobs to give him what he wanted. And he took a life. That should explain to you that none of us are secure in our life's journey except with God. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So if you have not given your life to Christ, seek ye while he may be found. What you saying, sir? There's going to come a time when you ain't going to be able to find God. And it ain't going to be because he lost. Hint, hint. He ain't never lost. He know where he live. You love him. Come on, let's pray. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you. We thank you for each and every heart that is here on today. God, have your way in this place. Touch the mind and the hearts of these, your people. Let them seek you while you may be found. God, when they hear you knock, let them open the door and receive you and you receive them. And you said you would come in and you would sup with them and then have them sup with you. Come into our hearts, God. Come into our minds. In Jesus' name, we thank you for your